Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Today, guys, we're going to look at the topic balance sheet. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to demonstrate how to prepare a horizontal balance sheet from a list of balances in the order of permanence. Now, let's review the format of the horizontal balance sheet. For this format, it represents the accounting equation, asset is equal to capital plus liabilities. So let's take a look at a sample. So for this balance sheet that you're looking at, you notice that there is a T that is represented in red. And on the left-hand side, you have, if you look, you have fixed assets and you have current assets, right? While on the right hand side, you have your capital and liabilities, where liabilities are broken down into long term and current, which are basically your short term liabilities. So if you look at it, you would notice that on the left hand side, on this side, you are seeing your assets. So on the left, you have your assets, and on the right, you have your capital and your liabilities. So basically, you're seeing the accounting equation coming out, asset is equal to capital plus liabilities. And that is basically the format of the horizontal balance sheet. If you notice, though, the items are categorized. Once you categorize the items, basically you are preparing a classified balance sheet. So you, you list your fixed assets, you list your current assets. So fixed assets are listed on a, the heading fixed assets while your current assets are listed under that particular heading. On the right hand side, you notice you have long-term liabilities. Your long-term liabilities are listed in that category and your current liability is listed in that category. Once items are categorized, you're preparing a classified balance sheet. Now, let us move back over to the format. Remember, it is assets equal to capital plus liabilities. That is the accounting equation that is represented in the horizontal format. Now, we're going to look at a question where you're presented with a list of balances and you're asked to prepare the balance sheet for N Brown as at 31st of October, 2020. Now we're going to look at the preparation of the balance sheet. So remember, the horizontal balance sheet is where you have a T that separates your left-hand side from your right-hand side. Your assets are listed on the left-hand side while your capital and liabilities are listed on the right-hand side. Now, for the question, we have cash, and cash is an asset. Premises is an asset to stock is an asset. Let's check if there's any other asset. We have motor vehicle as asset. We have bank as asset, machinery, debtors, furniture as asset. Now, in doing the balance sheet, you would pick up your fixed assets first. So coming from the question, let me highlight those for you. Our fixed assets are premises. We have motor vehicle, we have machinery, and we have furniture. Now we're gonna put those into the balance sheet. No, when you're doing the balance sheet, bear in mind that the items, because we're looking at the one we list them in order of permanence, the items must be listed in order of permanence. When we say order of permanence, we mean that you begin with the item that would stay in the business the longest. Now, in terms of order of permanence from the four items that we have, which one would be listed first? What would be the order in how you would list them? So we would start with premises. We would have machinery following, 
then furniture and motor vehicle would be the least permanent based on the list that we have. So let us look at that part of the balance sheet. Also, bear in mind, people, that before you begin the balance sheet, you have to put in your heading. And our heading reads N. Brown, which is the name of the owner. If you're given a name of the business, that is what you would put right here. But if that is not given, you would use the name of the owner. Balance sheet as at 31st of October 2020. You have to indicate what you are preparing, hence the term balance sheet. You have to put the period in which you're preparing it for ends October 31st, 2020. And we're gonna look at the fixed assets section first. So here we have the fixed assets. Once you list them, remember they must be listed in order of permanence. Ensure that the amount that you enter for each fixed asset is correct. Then you would total. So our total fixed asset is 101,930. After you have listed all your fixed assets and total, then you would move into looking out for your current assets. Now, in terms of current assets, what do we have? We have stock, we have cash as current assets, we have bank as current assets and debtors, okay? Now, your current assets in the balance sheet, remember we're looking at the order of permanence, the current assets in the balance sheet are listed with the one that is hardest to be converted into cash, finishing with cash itself. All right. So in terms of that order, it would be stock listed first, followed by debtors, followed by bank, and then we would have cash. So let us look at that section. In doing that section, you have to list the heading that you are preparing it for. And that heading is current assets. So you're your senior stock, debtors, bank, cash. Now, having listed your current assets, you would then total. So our total current assets is, uh, let me highlight that for you. Our total current assets is $14,230. Now, we are going to move over to the right-hand side because we're finished with the left-hand side of the balance sheet. We have listed our fixed assets. We have listed our current assets. So we have all our assets listed. Let us prepare the right-hand side of the balance sheet. And remember for that section, you're showing your capital and liabilities. But in doing that section, you'll prepare, you'll show your capital first. And from the question, we are seeing that capital is right here, which is 81,930. I must indicate that there are some questions that you will be given where capital is not readily available. So it means that you will have to calculate the capital. What you will use to generate your capital will be the accounting equation, which is assets minus liabilities equal to capital. In this question, capital was already calculated for us. So let us look at the entry of that in the balance sheet. You would have the heading capital and liabilities. Then you would enter your capital. You would use the last column for that. In terms of column people, let me backtrack. If you notice on the left-hand side, you have two amount columns and when you begin by listing your fixed assets, you use the column to the right. After listing that and entering your total, you would move into, so this column basically, let me highlight that column for you. This column serves as the main column. Then because we need to calculate our current assets, we'll have to use the other column, which is this one, to do that calculation. This one to do that calculation, list them so that we can calculate and enter the value in the main column because this 14,230 is needed to be added to the 101,930 when we're doing our total. 
So that's the reason we have two amounts column on each side. Okay. Now, after the capital, so the last thing that I was looking at was the capital and you're seeing the capital listed and it is in the main column on the right hand side. The next thing that we are going to look at is to look for our liabilities. Our liabilities are bank loan, mortgage, and the creditors, right? But what we're going to need first are the long-term liabilities. Our long-term liabilities are bank loan and mortgage. So let's enter those in the balance sheet. In fact, we're looking at the entries, those entries in the, in the balance sheet. So you're seeing the heading, long-term liabilities. So here's the heading, long-term liabilities and the long-term liabilities are listed under that. So you have to ensure that you have your heading. Having listed your long-term liabilities, they are in the second column the column to the left, basically because you need to generate the total of your long-term liability. So we're using this column to basically do your workings. So you can transfer the total in the main column like you're seeing right here, the 31,500. Now, having listed your long-term liabilities and total your long-term liabilities, remember the value must be placed in the main column because you need that so that we can generate a total for this side. We are now going to enter the other category of liability, which is current liabilities. And that current liability there is creditors. So let us look at the entry of that in the balance sheet. You have to put in your title, current liabilities, and your title is right here, current liabilities. Now, if you notice, under this category, there is only one current liability. So instead of using the calculating column, you put that value in the main column because it's only one. If there were more than one, then you, just like the long-term liabilities, you would list them in this column and then the value, the total will be transferred to the main column. All right. Now we are finished entering the balances that we were presented with in the balance sheet. So therefore, the final thing that is left for us to do is to enter our totals. So guess what? The totals must be listed on the same level, in the same row, basically. Right. So. 101,930, which is a total of your fixed assets, added to the total of your current assets, which is 14,230. That would give you a total of 116,160. So remember, you add your total fixed assets to your total current assets to give you the total of the assets on the left-hand side of the balance sheet. Now, it's a balance sheet. So guess what? When you add that 81,930, the 31,500, which is your long-term liability, and your current liability of 2,730, you should get back this very same value. So that is how it is entered in the balance sheet. Single line above, double line below your totals once you're finished with your balance sheet. And guess what? It said balance sheet. So definitely the total on your left-hand side must be this very same total on the right-hand side once you are correct. If it is that the totals are not the same, it means that you might have made some errors somewhere. So you have to backtrack and do your check. So you have to double check your response. All right. And again, remember the horizontal balance sheet shows your total assets equal to total capital and liabilities, which you are basically seeing at the end of this, we're having listed our fixed assets or current assets, total 
listing your your capital and your liabilities and you total you realize that they're the very same total so therefore you have you would have successfully completed the balance sheet join me in another session where i'll be looking at the vertical balance sheet like share and don't forget to subscribe